Hi, folks. Welcome to our latest tariff webinar. I'm Nick Esposito. I'll be your host today. I'm TRG's Business Development Manager. With me today is Greg Cummings, Managing Partner of Strix and a licensed customs broker. You guys probably remember him from all the other tariff webinars we've had so far. This webinar is being presented by Strix and TRG. We're located in the heart of downtown Bozeman, Montana. If you're ever in town, don't forget to stop by our shared office space on the second floor of the historic Rocking Our Bar building. Both companies operate on a direct importer business model that is unique to the international trade community. As, is, as an important disclaimer, the information presented in this webinar is for information purposes only and is not intended and does not constitute legal advice. We'll be recording this webinar. It'll be available on YouTube for future reference to be notified the moment it releases and to keep a pulse on TRG's educational videos. I highly recommend you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions during the presentation, submit them via the questions section of the webinar. We'll answer them shortly afterwards. If you have any additional questions outside of the webinar or if you'd like to be a part of a community of trade professionals, join our Facebook group, International Trade Professionals hyphen TRG. All right. Let's hand it over to Greg to kick off the webinar. Thanks, Nick. Uh, well, here we are in August, kind of a, a vacation month where we're all just kind of thinking about family and getting away. Nothing ever happens, of course, in August because we're just kind of smoothing our way to Labor Day. You know, nothing in our business worlds will whatever happen then. Uh, of course, it's 2019. So here we are once again with uh, continued escalation in our worlds. Here's a couple of the things we're gonna talk about today. Uh, what happened, there was a breakdown in Friday's announcements, tweets, things that are important to our world in the both very near future as well as for the rest of the year. Some dates and figures on the new list four. An update on the state of negotiations. And section 301 tariffs how they relate not just to Chinese products, but also some of the things that are on the docket for the EU and France. So away we go. August 23rd, most of us were getting ready to pack up the station wagon and move out to some fun spaces, but yet the news was upon us. So the president published a series of tweets that had a number of announcements that were going to have some significant impact on us. So we wanted to kind of do a breakdown on those and see how they're affecting not just the lists that are already out there, uh, but also lists that have been published as well as ones that are still yet to be imposed. So the first one was China came out and in retaliation for our list four, and the goods that had been proposed to move forward there, they put tariffs on $75 billion of U.S. products. Okay, this was in retaliation to List 4, and as we'll speak about in another minute or two, List 4 has been broken up into a 4A and 4B section. With that announcement, of course, we came out and said, well, Lists one, two, and three, currently at 25%, which have been so for a little over a year, would now increase an additional 5%. This increase will go into effect on October 1st, so lists one, two, and three will no longer be 25% additional tariff. They will now be 30%. And uh, that encompasses, as we know, a uh, little in excess of $250 billion dollars of goods that are produced in China and imported to the United States. Recently, List 4 came out uh, as, as a suggested tariff increase of 10%. Since then, List 4 has been segregated out into 4A and 4B, and with the, re the recent announcement by China, that has now been increased from 10% to 15%. Now, this is a significant list. Previous lists 1, 2, and 3 added up to $250 billion. List 4, A and B, are in excess of $300 billion. So it's, it's almost saying just about everything else that's produced by China will fall into this category. So again, moving from 10 to 15% there. 
Now let's talk about list 301 and uh, or section 301 and the list for implementation in a bit more detail. Um, we had at least for a little while in June the kind of positive notion that negotiations were going somewhere. We had announcements that uh, President Xi and uh, Mr. Trump did come to some sort of a bilateral good faith agreement. We saw then that the sanctions that were imposed on Huawei uh, would uh, would be uh, would be lifted or delayed, and China would agree to start purchasing some of our ag agricultural products, as well as an important addition to the conversation was fentanyl, and the exportation of fentanyl by China has of course been uh, a very hot political topic, health topic. Uh, as uh, as a lot of people are suffering from overdoses of fentanyl in the United States. Unfortunately, after about a month, uh, Chinese imports of agricultural products never really, uh, re never really came about, and the exportation of fentanyl did continue. This, of course, led to uh, some additional tweets. Uh, that the, the, the additional product uh, quantities that were, that were said to be purchased never happened. Uh, it was a polite tweet uh, uh, in a sense that uh, he said, my friend, President Xi, uh, didn't do so, as well as he did not stop the sale of fentanyl to the, uh, to the United States. And because of this, trade talks are continuing, but uh, this means that we're going to move forward with list four. So preliminarily, List 4 was set up and announced on May 14th, uh, again, covers $300 billion of imported goods, and on August 13th, it was further announced that the segregation of List 4 would be put into two parts, List 4A and List 4B, and those parts would have different dates. So after that, China announced that they would be imposing retaliatory tariffs against uh, the idea of list four. This would cover 75 billion. They would be 10%, cover over 5,000 products, including agricultural products, such as soybean and crude oil, important parts, of course, politically to this administration. And those retaliatory tariffs would take effect this Sunday, September 1st and December 15th. The announcement of this uh, retaliation is then, of course, what prompted the tweet on rising all tariffs by 5%. And that's list one, two, and three. Although list four, I guess we can say that was, that, that was increased by 5% as well, since it originally came out at 10%. So now we look at list four, and it will, be, it will begin at 15%. List 4A will begin this Sunday, September 1st. This covers over 3,000 HTSs, wide variety of items, antiques, home goods, live animals, really a, a very diverse group of HTSs. And again, that original amount of 10% raised to 15%. That starts this Sunday. 4B is going to be delayed until December 15th. And this covers a little less than 600 HTSs, electronics, apparel, and footwear. And because these kinds of products are very much a part of the holiday season, uh, this was delayed till December 15th. So again, as with List 4A, began at 10%, raised to 15% when China made their announcement. <laughs> As everyone tries to, to make sense of all this, um, that's probably the wrong term, as we try to research this and stay on top of it, um, it's good to have a lookup code. Okay, So if you have uh, HTSs and you're not certain where they fall uh, with under which list, most of them fall somewhere these days, but under which list and at what tariff rate, uh, TRG has a really great lookup tool that will be included in uh, kind of a post-webinar email. So use that if you want to take a look at what you're doing today and see what the future holds. So Section 301, 1, 2, and 3 increases. Currently at 25%, October 1st, all three of these lists will increase to 30%. We don't have the USTR notice on this yet. 
and we are in such a dynamic environment right now. You know, it's possible that this could be delayed. It's possible that something, some negotiation, some move by either party would delay that uh, for an extended period of time. So, of course, keep yourself tuned in to what's going on. But right now, although we don't have that official notice, we expect to see it in the next couple of weeks. Move from 25, list 1, 2, and 3 to 30 percent. Now, when you take a look at this and you're planning for this, it is really, really important to understand the supply chain and how it's going to affect you. Whether or not you're part of list four, whether or not you're part of list three, if you're trying to get ahead of it and you're ordering your goods, please focus on the estimated time of arrival. Because there are two aspects that are going to ensure that you get the earliest tariff rate you can when you're importing these goods. The first is, of course, the entry summary. Okay, You must submit the entry summary timely, and, in, and it has to be received and accepted by customs in order to receive that tariff. In addition, however, the actual date that the shipment arrives at the port of entry must accompany that entry summary in its final form. And what I mean by that is we can make an entry date two or three weeks prior to the goods coming in. In fact, the, the entry summary could be fully accepted paperless by customs five days prior to arrival. But the entry date will update when the actual physical shipment arrives at the port of entry, and that ultimately is going to determine the tariff rate. Okay, so we saw a lot of concern and and I guess I should say uncertainty about that uh, when lists one and two came out. A lot of people were trying to beat them, uh, setting their setting their 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 supply chains in motion. And what happened in a lot of cases is that the entry summary was submitted, but the uh, the statement was paid prior to the goods physically arriving. Customs knows this. This is an automatic part of the system, and it updates the entry date to the physical arrival, which of course resulted in a lot of supplemental duty bills. So it, you know, you're not going to be able to beat it. They've got to physically be here in order for that effective tariff to be in place. So if you've got any questions, you can call us about that. But those are some important semantics to the supply chain to be aware of. So as we continue to try and keep these things in front of you and understood, again, we've got lists one through three came out in 2018, been in place for almost a year, even list three at 25 percent, now scheduled to increase to 30 percent on October 1st. And we'll keep you updated on that. List 4A, 15 percent beginning this Sunday. List 4B, 15 percent beginning December 15th. So uh, keep your eye on this. Uh, if anything changes, we'll, of course, be updating you quickly. What's next? That's, uh, that's always a great question. We, of course, can't tell you firmly what's going to happen next. Let's take a shot at it, okay? So are things escalating? Can they get worse? Well, we've kind of seen this the past week. You know, just when the, just when you thought you had commodities and your supply chains in place, we didn't like 25 percent. We kind of thought that was firm. Now we're finding out it's not. So the retaliatory measures, the escalation continue, and we really have to call, let everyone know that 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 you can't feel that things are absolutely firm as you're projecting your business into next year. We just can't say that. The escalation is proving very tough. And so, you know, this week, we actually heard a sitting president suggest, some say order, hereby order, to move your production from China. It's actually a, you know, a fairly, uh, fairly incredible moment to watch something like this happen. So, um, you know, the suggestion is companies bring your goods back home, make them here. We all know that that's not perhaps easy to do in the short term 
or even possible to do in the long term. But that's the kind of rhetoric we've got going on out there. You know, fentanyl, of course, remains a very active part of this conversation. Uh, so it is being thrown in side by side with some of the very basic, important items like business technology and uh, trademarking. You know, that is really where this sits. This administration feels that hundreds of billions of dollars are being literally stolen each year through the licensing and technology arrangements required when you set up a company in China. So that that is what's not being addressed and the negotiations really aren't moving anywhere. So that's a that's really a core problem with this whole situation. So the questions, of course, we've been fielding these all week. You know, can he actually make us? not uh, uh, produce our products in China or keep the, the relationships we have in place. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a multi answer in that probably he can't keep you from those relationships, but under the current law can prevent future transfers of funds to, to China. Now, we don't know how that all might play out. That would be a pretty severe um, escalation as far as this is concerned. But this is the Emergency Economic Powers Act of 1977 that's being used. Will it uh, pass muster within the legal system? We don't know. Can it be presidentially a pro proclamated and imposed? That we can't know either. So... The lawful declaration that a national emergency exists must be made, and even if it does, Congress could potentially terminate the declaration if it wishes. I can't tell you what how how what the percentage of of uh, no votes on that need to be in order for it to to be stopped. But uh, we're in uh, we're in very interesting waters that uh, just when you again you didn't think it could get worse, it kind of has. Now, this past week, we also had a G7 summit in Barrett's, France, and uh, there was somewhat calming rhetoric that did come out. Uh, Vice President Liu, uh, he said uh, China was willing to resolve the trade dispute through calm negotiations, opposed any increase in the tensions, and uh, believed that an escalation in the trade war isn't beneficial for either of us. Now, we're still waiting to see if that's real or if we're going to get some follow through right now, uh, we can say that there was uh, an original attempt to meet in September, but no specific dates have been released. Uh, now, that's not to say that something can't happen very quickly. Obviously, it can. Uh, but, you know, to date, we don't have a firm date to see what comes next. Section 301, of course, is creeping along to potentially not just include China, but likely also include the EU. And so let's talk about this because this list uh, has been out there for a while, um, but this is an entirely different trade-related retaliation, uh, which is a, actually a very long-standing dis uh, dispute about the subsidies that have been given to Airbus by people in the, by, com by countries in the EU, and this um, comes from a ruling back in May of 2018, where the WTO ruled that EU had failed to fully withdraw those subsidies in financing Airbus, and it was found to be inconsistent with WTO rules and specifically harmful to U.S. interests. So, April of this year, USTR identified a preliminary list that was designed to, uh, to retaliate against uh, that, that additional subsidy uh, of $21 billion worth of products that duties might be applied to, uh, applied to. On July 5th, that was updated again, and an additional $4 billion in products were added. Those lists are out there. Again, these are not implemented yet, but those lists are out there. And the UST estimates that the harm from EU subsidies somewhere in the 11 billion range. The EU has challenged that figure. And so what we're doing right now is waiting for a final decision from the WTO. And they are the arbiter in these kinds of trade escalation and situations. Uh, but it is 
uh, expected to occur later this later this summer. I mean, the summer is kind of about another month away. So um, when we look at the final list, um, you know, it's important to take a look at that list today because some of these tariffs are much greater than some of the things we've seen uh, within the China categories, as, as much as 100 percent. So um, this is uh, something that can, you know, really, really shake a supply chain. <clears throat> In order to get that process started so the U.S. can respond immediately, this list was announced uh, back in April. Uh, the additional tariffs of 100 percent may be applied to this. And the comments time, uh, the comments section, uh, we're, we're all due by May 28th uh, in regulations.gov. So really kind of all the information that USTR needs to collate and look at has been received. And, and we might expect that when the WTO comes out, if, there, if it positively suggests that the U.S. has continued to be harmed by this, that this list will go into effect and probably fairly quickly. Now, the EU, of course, in this wide world of retaliation is doing the same. They have published their own preliminary list, and uh, that's in response to us and in specific to U.S. subsidies to Boeing their potential tariffs will be uh, similar to ours, possibly 100% on those products. So the trade wars uh, do continue, but uh, as we've spoken about this kind of on and off over the course of the year, um, it's getting close. So uh, take a look at those lists. If you're involved in these imports, please be ready. In addition to 301, France has introduced a digital services tax. And that was announced on July 10. The USTR immediately in, uh, initiated an investigation to see if that tax was unduly targeting U.S. companies. And uh, it, it's a 3% tax on the total revenues that are generated by certain companies in the tech sector where they're delivering services directly to French users. And what the U.S. is looking to determine is whether or not that structure is unfairly targeting U.S. technology companies. That's underway. It's very new. And, uh, you know, the, the, that discussion, so to speak, is just beginning. <clears throat> so uh, as that investigation moves on, the USTR is going to determine whether or not this uh, DST is actionable under 301. And if so, what kind of uh, action would we take in such a case? It will initially focus on the concerns, uh, you know, whether or not we're discriminating specifically against U.S. companies. And if that action is taken, it will be retroactive back to Jan 1 of 2019. So very interesting, you know, as, as these escalations and these items become visible, they look like they're happening pretty quickly now. We haven't seen a preliminary list. Nothing's been released at this time as the investigation is still underway. But... You know, we kind of have teams that are used to doing this now, and so I think we can expect to see something uh, likely in the very near future. So how is this affecting you? Well, we've all been living on the bond sufficiency roller coaster here for the past year and a half, and uh, just when you thought you were, uh, you were done with the roller coaster and heading back to the starting line, it kept going. And so you're back on the roller coaster again for another ride. And, uh, you know, no charge except, of course, to your tariffs and to your bond. But we've got to keep a, people, we have got to keep a close eye on this. If you're in list one, two, and three, you know, you're, you're, you're likely going to be affected because, especially if you were part of list three from last year, you haven't gone, you're, you're just kind of coming up to a full year of impact within your bond. So we've seen a kind of staged rollout from customs on looking at how uh, the new duty payments uh, have rolled through the importing community over the past year. Now you're going to have another 5% on those lists. With list four, it's going to encompass literally everything else that's out there. Many people in specific industries, list four is going to be all new to them. They could have been, you know, completely tariff-free, and now you're moving to 15%. You've got to take a look at how this is going to affect you 
uh, and project that out over at least the next year. And and to be quite frank, if it looks, if things are going the way they're going right now, you can expect that list four is not going to stop at 15. It's going to go to 15, perhaps likely 30. So sit down in the boardroom, roll your sleeves up and do those projections. Look at what it is at 15 and look what it is at 30. Because list three, list one, two, and three are now at 30. And if our negotiations uh, don't go anywhere, they certainly aren't looking like they are. They're looking like they're getting worse. You can expect those lists to likely increase into next year as well. So keep an eye on what your bond is doing. If you've got any questions, please call TRG and uh, they can get involved. But when your bond is deemed insufficient, you're not going to be able to import so you've got to stay on top of it because in many cases, customs will send you a bond insufficiency notice. You must act quickly. So have those understand the mechanisms you need to have in place to upgrade your bond quickly and efficiently. If you're sitting in a $50,000 bond today, you've likely had little to no underwriting. If all of a sudden you've got a $50 or $100 million company and now you're looking at 10 15%, bond's going to go up a lot. It could go to one, three, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. And if that's the case, underwriting will be involved. Uh, cash deposits could be required. Okay, Understand all these things today. Hopefully, you don't have to use them. But if you do, have them in your back pocket and ready to move if you've got to. Uh, we and, and here's kind of a chart on bond sufficiency and the things that we've seen bouncing up and down. And you can kind of see as the lists come in, there go the bond insufficiency notice. They increase, they increase, they increase. Then as a period of time elapses and the and and the and the market kind of uh, calms or flattens out, you don't see anything else until other lists arrive. So now <clears throat> we've got a combination this fall of lists one, two, and three going to 30, you know, perhaps not a big impact, but depending on the size of your company, another 5% could very likely be a very big deal. Going from zero to 15, likely a very big deal. So we're expecting to see bond insufficiency notices ramp back up this fall. Let's all be on track. And if you do have questions, please do give us a ring. Uh, and here is a here is a very nice YouTube uh, on you know, kind of specifically how Chinese tariffs have impacted bond sufficiency. Um, but <clears throat> what have we got on the table now? You know, we've got 301 for China, all the increases that are occurring across the board there. We've got a potential for 301 hitting the EU could also happen this fall. You know, game that out internally. If, you're, if your products fall under there and some of those products could go to 100%, I mean, the very first thing you have to say is, am I, am I still able to viably sell with that kind of a cost basis in the market? Obviously, very important. So um, although this you know, suggests that it's Chinese tariff impact, it really, what it really is, is it's teaching you about bond sufficiency uh, in general. So what is it? How will the tariffs affect it? Um, what happens if your customs bond becomes insufficient? And for those of you who might be involved in, uh, in, in, in ADD and CVD, what's the stacking liability on a customs bond? Very important to understand that because that speaks directly to the risk that the surety has when they underwrite your bond. What can you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of beyond us to really say what you can do. Of course, stay informed. You know, things are happening quickly, and we're going to continue to get a lot of news into the month of September. So stay with the trusted news sources you've been using. Uh, we're out there um, sending out our uh, information through our channels all the time. You're obviously on that list, so you'll be hearing from us. Um, but at the same time, you know, start to sit down. Make sure the C-suite understands what's going on. If List 4 is going to become new to your company, make sure they understand what it means as far as expected tariff payments. You know, I can tell you in the brokerage community, uh, if you uh, all of a sudden were 
we were clearing entries for you. We were fronting duties and fees, and it was tariff free. Well, then we're you know we're not we're not fronting that much. If all of a sudden your entries start having five, ten, twenty thousand dollars in duties and fees associated with them, it's a different financial arrangement. So you're going to have to have discussions, not perhaps just with your <clears throat> bond partners, but also with your brokerage and your clearance partners. So very important to understand, stay on top of that. And as we always say, remember people, CBP, Customs and Border Protection, has not started the trade war. <laughs> they are they are in fact perhaps a, a little bit of a victim of it as, as the rest of us are, but this is what their job is is to take what's going on within administrations and within within trade and to oversee it. So they're not our enemies, they're our friends. We want to stay on the right side. Okay, so you know we get a lot of questions from time to time. How do I beat this? How do I not have to pay these tariffs? How can I maybe take my goods from a country under scrutiny? Transship it through another one and then bring it in with them as the country of origin. Remember, it's country of origin based. These tariffs are not the country of export or, the, or, the, or perhaps the next country of export in a transship. They are the country of origin. And if you think that you can beat CBP, if you think you're smarter than ACE, I'm going to suggest very kindly you probably aren't. And we see it all going on today. The increase in CF-28s, requests for information regarding customs entries on tariff codes, uh, countries of origin, they are going up. CBP in their ACE system has a tool like they've never had before. They can go out and they can manage and, and data mine what's going on within not just your supply chain, but everyone else who is bringing in goods from your supplier. You just can't escape it. So let's let's just, let's just play by the rules, okay? We don't love it, but let's play by the rules wherever we can. Not that sometimes we can't find creative ways to move forward, but we're going to do it in a compliant environment. <clears throat> so consultations are available. We at Strict do this all, all the time. If you want some guidance, if, if, if new things are, are presenting to you and you're not quite sure, give us a ring. We're very happy to do that. Um, if you look uh, you know, for some additional questions on tariffs, take a look at the Trade Risk Guarantee link. Uh, very nice. Uh, can, can help you out there. And uh, you really appreciate you tuning in again. It's a dynamic environment out there. Um, we tried to do our best to, to kind of keep you up on some of these recent announcements. Uh, the tweet storm, list four, what's going on there, uh, how are negotiations moving, and how is this affecting 301, not just with China, but possibly now with EU and France. Give us a ring. Um, we're not just a software provider. We're also a custom house broker. And to the extent that uh, you've got some questions uh, that, that you really want to get a second opinion on, how you're bringing things in, uh, both from a supply chain or a, or a tariff code point of view. We do it all day. We're happy to answer that. And uh, again, thank you. Uh, give us a call either here at Strix or at Trade Risk. And uh, thanks again. We kind of kept this short and pithy, but so much going on and so many questions coming in. We thought it was timely to do that. We'll probably be doing this again next month because who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So thanks again for tuning in. Have a great Labor Day, and thank you again all for your business and your interest. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach Greg at inquiry at strictsmart.com. Additionally, you can reach out to myself at marketing at tradersguarantee.com. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and most importantly, YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. I'll throw a link in the chat again. We'll catch you guys again in about a month.